What's up guys? In this video we are going to discuss pretty much everything you need to know about stethoscopes. Are you ready? Let's go! So first and foremost, what is a stethoscope? Now since you're watching this video, that likely means that you're either a respiratory therapist, nurse, student, or someone who's involved in the medical field in some way, shape, or form. So if so, welcome, I'm glad you're here, but you probably already know what a stethoscope is. But just to get nerdy for a second, a stethoscope is a medical device that is used for auscultation. And if you're not familiar, auscultation is just a fancy way of saying listening to the internal sounds of the body. The device itself has a disc-shaped resonator that is placed against the skin. It's connected to tubes with earpieces and that's what makes it possible for medical professionals to listen to human body sounds more closely. And this is what gives us an idea of the patient's condition. Stethoscopes are most commonly used to listen to sounds made by the heart and lungs. But with that said, they can also be used to listen to sounds of intestines as well as the blood flow in arteries and veins among other things. And one more thing, stethoscopes can be used with a manual sphygmomanometer in order to measure blood pressure. But we'll talk more about that in another video. What are the parts of a stethoscope? Now in order to know how to use a stethoscope properly, you first need to have a basic understanding of the parts of the device. So pretty much all stethoscopes really only have four basic parts, and that is the diaphragm, bell, earpiece and tubing. The diaphragm is the larger side and circular piece at the end of the chest piece and this is the part that we place on the patient's skin to listen. This provides the frequencies and sounds that you hear while using a stethoscope. Then you have the bell. This is the small end of the chest piece. It focuses more on lower frequency sounds that may not be easily detected by the diaphragm. This side is typically used on neonatal patients where the sounds are more difficult to pinpoint. And then there's the earpieces. These are simply the pieces that go into your ears. When inserting the earpieces, they should feel soft and fit perfectly into the ear canal. And last but not least, you have the tubing. This is what transports the sound transmission from the chest piece to the earpiece and allows you to hear the sounds. So now that you're familiar with all the different parts of a stethoscope, let's talk about how to use a stethoscope. Now the first step is you want to adjust the earpieces. They should be angled properly so that a nice, crisp sound can be heard. A big mistake that I see students and new users make is putting the earpieces in backwards. And if you do this, you'll know because you won't be able to hear anything. So when you're inserting the earpieces, just be sure that they are facing forward. And also, be sure that they fit snugly in your ear to keep out ambient noise. And to help with this, most models have interchangeable earpieces so that you can select a size with the proper fit. The next step is you want to position the patient. Making sure that the patient is positioned properly can make auscultation either very easy or sometimes very difficult. Now of course, you won't be able to reposition the patients in some cases, you'll just have to work with what you got. But if possible, try to position the patient in a way that makes listening easier. For example, to listen to the lungs, have the patient sit upright in a relaxed position. To listen to the heart and abdomen, have the patient get into the supine position, which means lying horizontally with the face and torso facing up. Now keep in mind, the sounds that you hear may sound different depending on the patient's position, meaning that you may hear a different sound in each position. For example, if the patient is sitting, standing, lying on their back, lying on their side, etc. Even though the patient's condition has not changed, if the patient is in a different position, you may hear a different sound. So that is just something to be aware of. And step number three, place the diaphragm to the patient's skin. Now if you work in the hospital, sometimes you'll have no other choice but to listen through the patient's hospital gown or clothing. But if possible, try to place the stethoscope directly on the patient's skin and this will give you the best results. 
Now let's talk about the steps for performing lung auscultation. Now since this is a respiratory therapy channel and as a respiratory therapist, we primarily use our stethoscopes to listen to the lungs. So with that being our primary focus, let's go through the steps of how to listen to the lungs properly using a stethoscope. First you want to explain the procedure to the patient to establish trust and report. Stand close to the patient to gain access to the target area, and in this case of course we're talking about the lungs. Now if the diaphragm of the stethoscope is cold, you should warm it by rubbing the surface to avoid startling the patient. Because you may not really think about it, but sometimes your stethoscope gets very cold and if you put it straight to the patient's skin, it could kind of shock and startle them a little bit. So you always want to warm it up a little bit by rubbing it before you put it to their skin. And then the next step is to place the earpieces of the stethoscope in your ears and adjust them as needed. Once the earpieces are in place, you can hold the diaphragm firmly against the patient's skin with enough pressure to have the patient take a slow, deep breath through an open mouth. At this point, you will want to listen to the sounds and try to identify their intensity, location, strength, pattern, and duration. You want to start out by first listening to the patient's anterior side. Start at the top of the lungs and then move downward to the lung bases. Then you can proceed to do the same thing on the posterior side. After listening to the front and back, top and bottom, then you can compare the patient's right lung to the left lung. And of course compare the anterior to the posterior side. And last but not least, once you're finished listening, you can document the findings in the patient's chart. And since this is a respiratory therapy channel, we're not going to cover auscultation of the heart and abdomen in this video, even though the process is very similar. So if that's what you're looking for, there are several other detailed videos on that topic on YouTube if you want to do a quick search. But I just wanted to give you a quick run through of lung auscultation so you'll have an idea of the basic steps. Now switching gears just a bit, since you've watched this far, maybe you haven't purchased a stethoscope yet. Now if so, you may be confused because there's so many different brands out there. So that is why we need to quickly discuss which stethoscope brand is the best. Now we actually created a detailed buyer's guide with reviews of the best stethoscopes for medical professionals. I will drop a link to that down below in the description. And if you click on and read the article, you'll notice that one brand pretty much dominates the entire list, and that brand is Lipman. And just so you know, they are not sponsoring us or paying me anything to say this. Just through my experience as a respiratory therapist, I've always found their products to be the best when it comes to getting a high quality stethoscope at an affordable price. Now my personal favorite is none other than the 3M Littman Classic 3 stethoscope. Now with this one, the quality is really good and in my opinion, it's a better bang for your buck when compared to some of their more expensive models that they offer like the 3M Littman cardiology models. Now this one is just my favorite, but to be honest, you really can't go wrong with any of their products. But if you're looking for something with a little more style, a little more flash, you may be interested in the MDF Rose Gold MD1 Premium Stethoscope. Now this one's for all the ladies out there. I mean, I'm a guy and even I'll admit, I'm not gonna lie, this one looks pretty cool for the girls. And now I know y'all ladies want to be looking good up on the floors. Yeah, yeah, we see y'all strutting around up there. But in all seriousness, I've never tested this one, but other nurses and female respiratory therapists that I've spoken with have nothing but good things about it. They speak very highly of the stethoscope, and that is why I feel comfortable enough to recommend it to you. So if you're interested, I'll drop links to these down below in the description, along with our full guide of the best stethoscopes. So there you have have it. Now you know pretty much everything you need to know about stethoscopes and hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If so, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button to support the channel. And let me ask you one final question. Which stethoscope is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below because I'm always open to new suggestions. And of course, be sure to subscribe because we got some more helpful videos coming out soon that you don't want to miss. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. 
And as always, breathe easy, my friend.